Hello and welcome developers, my name is Shay and this is another episode of Shay Develops. Today we're going to learn how to add a style sheet to our JavaFX project. Now we're going to be continuing with the JavaFX project that we started in the previous episode which was talking about the uh, grid pane layout to where we added a uh, where we did some style updates and whatnot. So I went ahead and did some and did some updates so that to make it a little better looking. It's not great, but it's something. Uh, but it's a little bit more readable. So here it is right here. This is what we are going to recreate based off of the information that we have right here. So the first thing that we're going to do, like I said, and, and there's all that. If you want to pause it and and write that code, because like I said I did do some changes added these column constraints, gave it a percent width of 100, so that way that my, that all my, uh, all my column, or the columns, the one column that I have has a 100% width across the, uh, across the view area that we have, that's set, you know, here in the main, which is 600 by 400. Anyway, so the first thing we want to want to do, though, is right click the, the sample here, we get a new file and we're going to call it styles.css or it could be welcome.css if you want to have your style sheets based off of just the fxml file that they're going to be attached to anyway so you can go styles.css and then now you notice that IntelliJ knows what knows what format of code that I'm working with and we've got our css files or our CSS file that we can go ahead and now start attaching uh, this information to. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is add it to our grid pane uh, element right here and tell it about this style sheet. So we're going to use the style sheets, the style sheets um, attribute here or uh, element. I'm sorry. Yeah, attribute, and we're going to give it a styles.css, and we're actually going to need an at sign at the front of that. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's start with fixing or messing with these labels and stuff like that. And we're going to add some IDs to these. That way, we can pinpoint exactly what we want to. Uh, to stylize with our CSS selectors. So if you may or may not be familiar with CSS, and this isn't a video on CSS, because actually the CSS with is, a, a lot of it is the same as far as whenever you're talking about CSS3 and then the CSS that we're gonna be using with our JavaFX uh, programs, a lot of it is the same. But some of it is definitely a little different and works uh, and can work slightly, slightly different. All right, so the first thing I want to do is style this button right here. So I'm going to go back to the style sheet. I'm going to do dot button and open and close curly braces. I mean, you're right there. Now this is going to attach itself to this button right here. So if we go ahead, like I said, and run this, run this again. Like I said, our button here, it's white, it's got some purple text with this purple border around it, and it's got some, some padding, which you can see all right here. So let's go ahead and close that. And now we're just going to take this right here, we're going to remove it, we're going to paste it into here. We're just going to clean this up a little bit. There we go. And then now we can run it. And that should, if we've done everything correctly, which it now does, it keeps all of our styling to our button. Now, if we had multiple buttons, this would, the styling would go to all the buttons that we have. And there is a way to make sure that doesn't happen by adding an ID to our elements that were within our FXML file. So we're going to show you that though, after I go ahead and erase this, 
Oh, that's not doing what exactly what I wanted to. There we go. And erase that. And we're going to add this, add them to the label. So we're going to go ahead and use ID equals. And we're going to set the ID to label one. And we could call it something uh, something else, but I'm just going to call it label one. And now to set an ID to make sure that we're selecting an ID with our selector. Remember this dot button right here is our selector. I don't want to try and tell you ultimate, but this dot button right here that's our selector. So if I use a uh, a hashtag symbol and do oh what did I call it again? I've already forgotten. Label one. I can now start adding my CSS styles to the label one. So we can go ahead and pull this out. And then erase this. And then go ahead and add it to our styles. I said, and then clean that up just a little bit. And now we're going to run it again. And we should still have, and we do right there, it should still be the text field properties white. So our, our, our code is white, which is good. Our FX font size is 28 pixels, which looks right here. And then our font weight is 600, which is looking pretty good. All right, so let's continue on. And we're going to do the same thing with the second label right here. So we're going to copy this ID part. And come down here, paste it here. And we're going to call this, well, let's go ahead and run this. Because whenever you're doing CSS and you're creating these things, you're not supposed to actually have multiple of the same named IDs and it looks like so far this isn't working which is actually the way it's supposed to work is it shouldn't allow us to have multiple IDs with the same ID name and then have that uh, correspond to the CSS text so we're going to change this to label 2 and actually that's not entirely true what I failed to mention right there is the fact that because this style is right here with written we call this in line with the element of label it's going to take precedence over if something was written in here so now if I go ahead and actually change this back to one and then remove this let's see exactly what happens here I wonder if it's going to take over. It shouldn't, but it looks like it actually does. And that's okay though, because we know how to chant. We know how to go ahead and fix that. So we're going to go ahead and change this to label two. And we're going to do label two. And then open and close in curly braces. And paste in our information. Go ahead and get rid of the style right here, because we don't need that. All right, and let's go ahead and run this, and it should still be looking like it should, or like it was, and indeed it is, which is nice. All right, so the last thing we're going to want to do is add this background image to our page. So if we go up here, and I said we have our styles right here for our background image, we're going to go ahead and add... I'm curious if this will actually work. So I'm going to try something here. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to give it a shot and see, and see if I can just, if I can uh, attach it to directly to the grid pane, which I've never actually done before. Just curious if this will even work, or if I have to set an ID to it as well. So if I'm attached to the grid pane, bring this out.
and clean it up a little bit. And then run it. Yep, I didn't think it was actually going to work. But you see, here you can actually see that it doesn't work. And you may not be able to read this. This says, welcome to the workout generator. It's like the workouts and we have this information here. So what we need to do then is maybe just get rid of this and run that again. Nope, still doesn't work. As a matter of fact, we even get an error saying that style manager image cache, get cached image, uh, error loading image is not working. Okay, so what we're going to do here is remove this style and then add an ID equals grid pane. All right, and we're going to come back here change this ID to grid pane, or the selector to an ID of grid pane, run it again, and hmm, it's still not working. It says air loading image, and we're pointing it to our image here, sample.kbb.background. Uh, so if we go in here, let's go here, and let's, and let's take a look. So hmm, well, that's weird. So our styles.css and our KBB background, they're in two different folders. So what's going on is we have our sample uh, package right here, and this contains all of our files. But then we have our source file here, and that's actually where our uh, background image is being held. So if we go back here to styles.css, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go back a directory, and we'll do that by heading the uh, two dots and then a uh, forward slash and this should take us back a directory from our styles.css file and hopefully take us back into the source file and then find this kb background.jpg image here let's go ahead and rerun this and it looks like that actually worked which is great so hopefully you guys are still following along. We're going to do one more thing, because right now whenever we hover, nothing happens right here whenever we hover this button. So let's add a little hover effect. So we can do dot button hover. And that is what's called a uh, pseudo selector, meaning that it's not actually like, we're not, we're adding like special attributes to uh, certain activities that you do with the uh, key presses or mouse movements or whatever and this one happens to be with the hover so what we're going to want to do is basically do the opposite of what we have here so we want to keep or we want to, we're going to copy all this the stuff we need the padding we're going to leave leave the same hopefully that won't cause us any issues but if it does we'll come back and fix it not a problem we're going to clean this up some Getting it all aligned right. So our text fill RGBA. So instead of this nice purple color, we're going to make it white. Now I can't remember if white is 255 all the way across or if it's zero all the way across, but we're gonna start with that one. All right, and then our border color, we are going to do the same. We're gonna do 255, 255, and 255. And our background color, we're going to change it to this RGBA value, which RGBA just means uh, red, green, blue, which is here, red, green, blue. Here, will make this a little bigger. So like I said, red, green, blue. And then this A value is the opacity of the actual color so if we have a one that means it's uh, not transparent at all and all the way down to a zero <clears throat> where it's completely transparent as in and everything in between from zero to one all right so let's go ahead and run this and see if this worked and now we go back here and once this try let's hover over it and that looks actually pretty good nice i like that all right, so guys, so that's how you would add CSS 
or a CSS style sheet to your FXML file uh, or FXML project. I'm going to put links down in the description to the uh, documentation for uh, the for uh, creating the, the CSS styling for your FXML style sheet. Like I said, because it is a little different than just standard CSS. Like I said, for starters, we have this dash FX uh, dash uh, syntax that we have to put in the front of all of our stuff. But some of it is actually like different wording or or whatever. But a lot of it does work the exact same. But until next time, so say, hopefully you guys have, like I said, learned something. You're sticking around. We're going to continue to build this out and do a lot more with it in the future. Please like, comment, subscribe. Put down in the comments what you guys are working on, how I can help you with your Java projects. If you guys got something that's going on that you're not quite understanding, I said maybe I can come in and give you some quick advice on that or make it or something I'd like to make a video on uh, to go a little bit more in depth on. All right, but until the next video, guys, I hope y'all have an amazing day. You're staying safe out there, and I'll see y'all on the next video.